Hey, good top of the morning to you whosoever. Today is the 27th day of November 2018. Gotta pay the water bill. Um, today's Doctrine of Salvation, Part 31. Uh, running late. I'm trying to get this done. Um, again, God bless you, anybody who follows us. Again, I do this more for, so as we get into the last days, uh, we get into uh, the tribulation that this would be good resources. Um, uh, to those who don't, uh, to come to faith maybe after the rapture. Uh, today I was working out and I was thinking to myself, you know, the military has this term, it's no, no, uh, no, no, ma no man left behind. You know, in the rapture, no born again Christian will be left behind. So be encouraged with that. Uh, today we're going to talk about God's counsel. What does the word counsel mean? Well, in Greek, Greek words, it means bolema. The word refers to deliberate and willful intention. Biblical examples are these. The intentions of the Pharisees to kill Jesus. John eleven thirty three. I'm going to kill you, Jesus, because you claim to be God. You claim to be the Son of God. He was. The intentions of the centurion to save Paul. Acts 27, 43. Remember an unbeliever and a, a centurion? They said, hey, 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 send some guards over there. They're going to kill that guy if I don't get involved, right? A council. Uh, the intention of God to offer up Christ, Acts 2, verse 23, Acts 4, verse 26, 28. God says, I'm going to send Jesus to die on the cross. The intention of God to save the elect, uh, Ephesians 1, 11 says, To whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated upon the purpose of him who worketh all things, after the counsel of his own will. The counsel. You know, I was reading, thinking of the Bible. I was thinking of the Bible. And I was thinking of verses. And Jesus said the reason why he's going to come back. Uh, because no flesh would survive. And that kind of spoke to me again. Uh, of God knowing parallel universes. Alternate realities. If, if, the, if, the, if the two witnesses would have preached to Sodom and Gomorrah. They would have repented or something like that. God knows... Um, God knows it's going to happen. God is, uh, understands, uh, he even sees alternate realities. And, he, you know, he helps us. But he also, he, he, he predestined each one of us. I mean, no one's predestined to go to hell. We were predestined to, onto salvation. God knows we're going to be saved. You know, we're God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs the promise of his immutable counsel confirmed by an oath. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 17. The Lord came back once. What makes you think he's not going to come again? He came as a baby. Born in Bethlehem. History tells us. You know God is, is the intention of God to control all things. Psalm 33 11 says. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. And the thoughts of his heart to all generations. There are many devices in a man's heart. Neither lest the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Proverbs 19, 21. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things for thy counsel of old are faithfulness and true. You know, God, God, God's counselor. God knows he's like in heaven. He's like, hey, I know, I know, I know. Hey. I'm going to use you right there. This girl, this person over there is having a hard time and thinking of committing suicide. God says, I'm going to move you and I'm going to put you guys together. You're going to encourage her. She's going to be refreshed. She's not going to kill herself later on in life. She's going to come to faith. She's going to start reading her Bible. She's going to tell her kids about the Lord. And then her kids are going to, you know, uh, grow up in the things of the Lord. And then the end times are going to come. The kids are going to remember what happened. And God used that one person to encourage that person who encouraged him. And God is, is like, a, not like a spider web, but God is in control. The counsel of the Lord, the, the predestination, the truth. You know, the, you know. Uh, sometimes we think that in life, oh, we missed, the, we, we missed it. I should have gone to college. I should have got married. I should have married that guy I didn't like because he had money. I, I would be okay right now. And God's like, no, 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 God. Listen to this. You know, God behind the scenes is working behind, for your benefit. Believe this again. God has predestined the counsel of the things. I remember I used to cry to God and I was like, you know, why is this happening to me? I am not that bad. <laughs> yeah, you were, Tony. 
I mean, our heart, our own heart deceives us, right? You know, get you gotta, you gotta now you gotta put your perspective of, of you know, your walk in, in light of God's word, and you're like, oh man, I am a sinner of unclean lips, you know. So you start seeing that God has moved. You know, I remember when I got saved, but what had to happen before I got saved? I had to lose my job. I had to lose my wife, lose my lose uh, my house, my sanity. And uh, again, finally, like, you know, crying uncle, you know, when, when someone grabs you when we're kids and, you know, okay, I'm going to read the Bible. My life is not working out. Things are not what they seem. You know, go, oh, Lord, you know, what, what, what would you have for me? Oh, yeah, I don't even, you don't even say, oh, Lord, what do you have for me? You're just like, you're just gasping for air, you know, just, just like, you're, you know, you're, you're like full of problems and then you just, you just see it and just like, it starts covering you, and you're just like, oh, what am I supposed to do? And someone says, read your Bible. The word of the Lord is a strong tower. And you're like, okay, you know, people on their deathbed, about to be ushered into an eternity of, uh, 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 of denying the only way to the Father, right? Denying Jesus. And God says, hey, I'm going to send you over there and testify. And the guy's like on his deathbed, and some guy says, "Hey, would you like a track, uh, uh, the Book of John?" The doctor came in yesterday and said, "Mr. Mr. Montavo, you got six, you got you got less than three months to live. Your body, I don't think your body could take it anymore. We're gonna send you to a hospice, you know, where you could we can make it comfortable for you as you as you uh, go into the, uh, uh, the setting of the sun." Worshiping the false Christ, right? He's never been saved. You know, it might be a little Christmas. You know, might be you know the little Lord a little bit knows the stories of the Bible, but never really came to faith in Jesus Christ. You know, and he's laying on that couch, or he's laying on that, uh, you know, gurney, or that uh, bed in the hospital, and he starts reading to the Bible, and he just starts crying. And God says, "Receive my son, and you shall have eternal life." But Lord, I am I am a bad person. Yes, you are. What must I do to be saved? Believe that Jesus died for you, God. You got less than three months to live. God never wants you. He wants you to be saved from your uh, by the chinny chin chin of your. Uh, you know, you, he's gonna save you. You know, and I'm telling you because I was the guy going into the hospitals when I first got saved, me and Chewy. You know, giving the gospel of the Lord and with people who we came back week after week, just, you know, I don't know, just naive and stuff. You know, you should have been here, but they never said that. We just walked around and said, God bless you. I have come to give you the gospel, the word of the Lord. And he says, would you like to pray? Oh, yes, what's going on? I am in this situation. Let's pray and let's see what the Lord can do. Man, the counsel of the things of the Lord Listen what the Bible says. The Bible says that the word of the God declaring the end from the beginning. From the ancient of times, that's the name of the Lord, the ancient ancient of days. You know, he's he's old, he's an old timer, he's an old G, right? My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. The Lord says, I'll do what I want. I am in control. You guys are like little ants, but I love you, ants. I love you. I sent my only son to become an ant like you. God, you know, saves us, saves those people, you know, out of the hands of the, you know, you got to be careful, you know, you got to be careful what you say in this world, because you don't want to wake up the lion. My dad and uncle says, uh, be careful, you don't want to wake up the lion. The end times are getting speed, carnal. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about predestination. I got to go uh, keep me in prayer. Uh, the end times, the devil is trying to set up his new world order. Uh, computers, on them, and everything will be cashless society, digital system. You know, if you think about it, if you won't be able to buy or sell without taking the market beast, you know, you got people in, in, in the, uh, you got people in the supermarket, La Marqueta, you know, I don't know about this chips thing, but then give, them, give me five bucks, finally, you got it. But what, if, what happens when everything's automated? Everything's the computer. The computer, the AI is like, I am with the all seeing eye. We are the cult of the rising sun. 
It's a cult, bro. The last days is going to be the biggest cult in the world. The B system. Great. The B East. The B East. Mr. 666. And God's like, no, 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 carnal. This is the bad guy. This is the bad guy. He might look like a good guy. But he is the, he'll, he'll wake up, you know, he is the lion. Satan comes as a roaring lion. Be careful that you don't wake up the lion. You know, receive Jesus Christ before the end times gain speed. Why? Why? Because you don't want to be, you know, trying to skirmish, trying to say, oh, you know what? Tony was right. The Bible was right. The God's word is coming to, come to pass. There's war coming. Move, famine, pestilence, all these things. Oh, oh, oh. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? He says, man, carnal, you should have been born again like five years ago. But you're going to be born again. That's okay. At least you're born again, right? But you're still gonna be a baby. You would have been at least five instead of one month old. You know, you'd be able to carry more of your weight. You'd be able to do more for the Lord. Why, 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 why does He want you to do the things for the Lord? Because in God, there is joy in serving. Even in our trials, when we get discouraged, and want to give up, and you know, I'll eat you, Kanal. Why you want to fight? Just do this. You know, your flesh gets out there. I'll, I'll eat you. But tomorrow we're going to talk about predestination. Que Dios te bendiga. Don't give in to the flesh. The flesh wants to eat you alive. You got to be careful with the flesh that you don't wake up the lion. Because the Bible says we have three enemies. The world, the flesh, and the devil. The world. Because the system is condemned. The world, the flesh. The flesh. It's the Amalekites. The old nature wants to come back and come out like a lion. But, but walk in the spirit and you'll feed the white dog instead of the black dog, right? Yes. Feed the word, feed the spirit of God with the word of God. And then the devil. The devil is about to be incarnated in a man. And he's going to want to be worshipped. And the Bible says it's a bad thing. So may the Lord bless you. Be greater, be strengthened. The Lord is coming. I'm telling you, bro, he is coming quickly.